Hey, what's up parents and teachers? This video is for teachers, but parents, you'll want to watch it too because most of my audience is parents, probably about 80% parents. And you can share this with your teachers because this video, parents and teachers, will make life easier for all of you kids, all, all the students who struggle with executive function. So teachers, for your students who are always late with their homework, they have missings, incomplete homework, zeros, uh, they're asking, they're doing test corrections, they're asking for extra copies of things. Those students that really struggle with executive function, this will help you, it will help the parents, it will help everybody in many ways. So the first thing I'm going to show you is you hop into your own regular Google Calendar here and you pick your category. In this case, I'm calling the category school. So you see we have nothing and then when I turn on the school one, it shows everything. And what you might want to name it is your name. So my name will be Mr. Perler. So I would call the school Mr. Perler. And what's cool about this is that you can share it with everybody. Now, I'm an executive function coach in Colorado, and I use these calendars in my own personal calendar to share with all the families so that they can always see my schedule the whole semester. So I do a semester at a time, and I put every single thing in there so that there's no confusion. I do what's called front-loading. I front-load the calendar um, for the families in this way. Now, before we get started here, I'm going to show you. So we have these different... These are the ca calendars that I usually have students set up. I'm not going to get into that here. I have that in another video. But usually students, I'll have my students set up their own Google Calendar with school, family, fun, important, and wellness. So those are the categories that I usually get them started with in using this stuff. But in this case, they're gonna, you're going to share, teachers, you're going to share your Mr. Perler or whatever your name is. You're going to share your calendar with them so that they'll have access in other calendars to your calendar. How do you do that? I'm not going to get into all of it here, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to go to the settings here. And you can figure this out on your own because you are going to have to think about, um, I can't even figure out how to do it from here, so let me go the other way. So if you click these three dots here, go to settings and sharing, that goes to the, the name, that's where you can change it to your name. You can put a description for the family so that they know what's in it, and then set your time zone. You can export the calendar, you can make it available to the public, get a shareable link, and you can add the family. So if you just want the parents or just want the students or you want everybody, you can figure out who you want to add and you can give them notifications on the events, which is very powerful because you can set up multiple notifications, et cetera, et cetera. So anyhow, you are going to share this with all the families. Now, here's what you're gonna do on your Google Calendar. One of the things that you're gonna to wanna to do is choose a color. I always choose red for important, so I made the whole school calendar red. And what's interesting is if you right click this and you turn it to green, what you can, or yellow, for, for example, yellow might be, hey, we need to really be on alert for this, it's coming up. Red might mean, hey, big alert, this is time sensitive. Green might mean, hey, this is in the past, this is done, you don't ever have to worry about this again. Obviously, if the student didn't, didn't turn it in, they'd have to worry about it again. But you can do this globally for the whole class if you want to, and you can make your whole calendar look green for past dates and red for upcoming dates, and that way it can visually alert your visual students as to what's coming. So here's my notes that I made for this, for this talk that I'm doing right now for you. The benefits of this, what I'm about to show you, are first that you can share it with everybody. Parents know all the details of what's happening. They know how long assignments should take, how to get help from you, and it should have your FAQ. I'll talk about that in a minute. It will save you time, the teacher, because it's all here. You don't have to answer the same question 50 times over. You can just say, hey, did you look at it on the calendar? Everyone is on the same page, and even if there's, you know, if there's a problem and a family says, no, we didn't know about this, you can even have the admin on this, and you can say, yep, it was there, it's been there, and it's very clear, and you can show them how it's there. So you won't have to do extra copies ever again if the students who you have, you know, some families don't have a copier, and that's one situation, but if they have access to a printer, um, you don't have to do extra copies. You can say, oh, you need an extra copy? Yep, you know where to get it. It's in my calendar. I always put it there. You can even do photos in this here so that they can see a picture of the assignment or of, you know, if it's a science project and there are materials that they need, a picture of the materials or what have you. 
You can set very clear expectations for everybody. It'll cut down on confused parents. And because they're not as confused, they're not going to be emailing you as much anymore, which means that you can focus on what you need to be doing more because you're dealing with emails less. Um, it will cut down on the late work, which will have, help everybody. Obviously, it'll help the students, and they'll be less stressed and more on top of their work. And everybody has a record of past stuff, so there's no confusion. They can go into it and get real details in an easy way of anything in the past. Um, it's easy for everybody to locate these calendars. And I said this already, but you can always ask them, well, did you look in the calendar where I have the details? Um, and they can access it from any device anywhere in the world that they have uh, their Google Calendar on their device, and you can make it visual with color coding. So those are some things here in my notes. And so let's, I'm going to show you just a little thing right here. One thing you can do that's cool is if you move a date of an item, let's say you back up a due date, you can just shift the event here. Another thing I wanted to show you is this is in the school calendar, but I coded it red. If you right click on it, you can change it to another color. For example, this blue here, and that way everybody can see, let's say you have a four day weekend here, you can plan that. And the way that you do that when you go into it is you click on the dates here and you can click on whatever date you want and it's it will beautifully show the kids. This is also good if you have a long term project. So if you have a long term project that's a week or two or three weeks long, you can make a long item like this that shows the duration of that project and within the item you can put all of your details. Now what I want to show you here is that basically what uh, this math one I really want to show you. So what you you want to keep it as visual and simple as possible because people have different size screens and phones and everything. So the way that I do things is very shorthand. So let me I like to expand my screen but not everybody expands their screen. But here M do I like that it says M do because it means that something's due. It's in red. Page 38, 1 through 19, odd only. So I'm giving the details of what's due, but watch this. If you click it, now they can see all of these things. And teachers, this is what I suggest. What you can do is you can replicate this for the whole year. So I can make this repeat for the whole year. Let's say my homeworks are always due on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I can repeat them there and I can have the format and then I can fill in the details individually for each one. So here's what I mean. So basically, if we are looking at this uh, homework here, the math is due, I can say to them, hey, click here to see it on the portal. Now, I have learned because I'm a blogger and a vlogger that you need to tell people where to click because people are confused. So you might even need to highlight this differently. Anyhow, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Click here to see it on the portal, and then if they click the link, it opens up a new tab. Now, I just put my home page there, but you can have them go to the portal. That way, there's no confusion. If you have information and you're using portals, you can tell them to go there. Click here for the PDF. Objective. Now, this is really good for parents because pa let's say this one's for master dividing fractions. That's the objective, the learning objective. Parents can see what's the point of the homework. That way, if parents are seeing that their kid is working on something and it's something's just really askew, they can say, hey, we weren't even meeting the objective. We were doing busy work or we weren't even getting to this. Um, we are so far behind. We're so far ahead, whatever. But they have a clear objective. So every, I suggest that you say, what are the directions? Directions. Try to do as many of these problems, blah, blah, blah. Duration. Teachers, this is really important. You have kids in your class that take five minutes, kids in your class that take two hours. Tell families how long it should take because a lot of my students with executive function struggles, particularly the ones, particularly the ones with executive function struggles and processing issues, they will take a lot longer. So say this should take about 30 minutes, and if it takes longer, what do they do? So give parents an idea of this. Help. To get help, what should they do? Tell them what to do right here. Modifications. If you want to modify this, if you want more or less challenge or whatever the modify, do this, do that. Quality. Now, this is something that I see a lot with my students who are rushing through their work. They sacrifice the quality. So when I'm particularly with math, but with anything, uh, but really with math, I would say to my students, hey, I would rather you do one 
problem with high quality to perfection, then 10 and rush through them and get a few wrong and not really integrate it. So you can talk about quality here if you want. Then you can give your contact info. If they need to contact you, what should they do? What is your preferred method? Tell them right there. And then say, click here for Mr. Perler's FAQ. And your FAQ should be a page. It can be in Google. It can be a Google Doc that's shared. It can be um, any number of things. So it can be on your site, whatever. But I want, when people ask me the same questions, I don't want you teachers spending time answering the same questions over and over. Have it for people so that you can direct them to this and you can cut down on having to answer the same stuff all over and over so you can focus on teaching and planning and prepping and creative lesson planning and uh, meeting students' needs and all those things, okay? So anyhow, you can, like I said, you can replicate this whole thing over and over and over for the whole year and just change the details on the objectives and the directions and the durations. Like those three details generally, you, you might be changing. The rest of it can often stay the same. Now I'm going to show you something else. So if we go into editing this and you want to give them a link to something, what you do is you can take the link and you can put your link. So let's say... Um, it says click here for Mr. Pro's FAQ. You just click here. You put the link in there. You click OK. And done. It's beautiful. Look at that. Now when I save it, when the family opens it up, whether it's the student or the parent, they can always find your link or your PDFs or whatever you want right away. It's so easy. It's beautiful. So anyhow, I just wanted to show you that math one. Now let's say that the math was done. I can right click this or I can also go into it and edit it from there. Uh, let's click it to green and just signify that let's say we're done with that homework. Now this one I did differently. In bio, let's say that it's not due, but let's say that they are recording data on um, what time the sun sets and rises every day or whatever they're studying. Well, you wouldn't see that in bio, but you get the point. Um, for our lab, and you can put the link here, remember to, and this could be something where it's a reminder to record data, but it's not due because they're collecting data day after day. So you can use that with many different applications as well. Now this one, it, I showed you a little bit differently. So let's say that your LA, final essay, is due on Friday and you have all the details in there, the rubric, everything. But for the students who struggle with executive function, these are the kids who wait till the last minute. So what you can do is do what I teach my kids to do, which is called backwards planning. These kids with executive function struggles do not know how to do this naturally. Your kids with strong executive function do, but not these other kids. So your backwards planning, you can say, well, hey, the night before, you should do a final edit and a final re revision. And then you can put the details in there for the parents to say, hey, our big paper's due to tomorrow night. Your kids should probably spend a half hour to an hour doing a final edit and revision. You can help them. It's not cheating, blah, 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 Wh however you word it. Maybe the night before, you suggest that they work on it the night before. Or maybe you suggest that in the two weeks before, they pick three days. But the point is, is that you can have different points so this is a long-term project and you can have different points to show the families this is what you should be doing in an ideal world so that parents can say oh okay so my student should probably spend five or six nights writing this big paper not wait till the last minute the night before which so many of my students do when it comes to pepper papers exams uh reading large reading assignments and projects um those pepper things, papers, exams, projects, and reading, reading assignments, they, my students, the ones who struggle with executive function, often wait till the last minute. They don't get as much out of it um, They because they have waited till the last minute and they crammed it, so their brain's not integrating as much, yada, yada, yada. So this is a great way to show it as well. Um, and let's see, oops. And then I showed you the no school thing. I think that's about it. I think the only thing I didn't mention is that in the settings that I mentioned before, you have to think about privacy. I didn't tell you about that because you all are different with that. But do you want it public? Do you only want it to certain people? Do you want to share the link? How, how are you going to manage that privacy aspect of it so that everybody is safe and everything like that? Um, but generally speaking, this covers, this should help you really get started um, with 
making life easier for everybody because one of the biggest problems that I have is that families are confused. They don't know what's going on. They don't know if they can trust their child or not with the details. Their kid might say, oh, no, I don't have anything tonight. Oh, no, I already turned that in. Well, that's a different issue that I already turned that in. But either way, they can get clarity. And that's the biggest problem that I have is parents don't have clarity as to the expectations, what's going on, how long things should take, when things are due, what the late policy is, the FAQ, how to contact you, should they help their child, is helping them cheating, is helping them not cheating, are they doing too much, are they, all these questions parents are dealing with all the time. Now, parents, and, the, and teachers, you should hear what I tell parents right now, and this will be on the teacher's calendar which will be shared with your child's calendar, but your child will not have editing ability on this. So if your child finishes an assignment, they will not be able to change the color of it. However, your child can replicate these things and do a color coding thing where, um, you know, you don't have to show every calendar all the time. You can turn this calendar off, the teacher's calendar, and if they replicate the teacher's things or at least what's coming up in the, in the next in the near future and then they can do their own color coding i'm really a big fan of changing the red to green because on this calendar it is so uh visually easy to see when something is green and they don't have to worry about it and this is so annoyingly red and they know visually that they have to do something so if your child is using a google calendar on their own using this simple color coding strategy also for them to track what's in and then they can write down or they can type into the calendar you know if they turned this in they can um, they can add that note and they can say turned in by email on you know whatever date so they can have a record of it. Now, of course, your child who struggles with executive function doesn't want to do an extra detail to track the record, but some of them will. And that extra detail to know for the kids who are willing to do that can save a lot of frustration because they can look in there and say, no, I know with confidence I did it. But what we hear a lot is the kids say with confidence, I know I turned it in. I swear I turned it in. I promise I turned it in. I remember turning it in. I can visualize myself turning it in. And they didn't turn it in. And I hear this story over and over. And I think there's a reason for that. I think that a lot of kids like do visualize themselves doing it, but they didn't actually do it. Um, but either way, we want to help them with executive function to um, – to make life easier for everybody. So teachers, I really encourage you to do this. My name is Seth Perler. I don't even know if I introduced myself. I'm an executive function coach based in Colorado. I have struggling students navigate this thing called education so that they can have a better future. And um, if you like what I'm doing, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Do you have any ideas for this? What would work? What wouldn't work? Leave a comment in YouTube. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe on YouTube. It helps my work get out when you um, support me in that way. And check out my blog. I have free resources for parents and teachers, an executive function quiz, among many other things. My site is filled. Check out SethPerlo.com and, uh, and share it with some people if, if you appreciate what I'm putting out in the world. Be well. Take care. Be safe. Be healthy. I'll see you soon.